what do we need to be aware of when it comes to Azempic and the conversations here? Yeah, I get questions. I get DMs from social media asking about microdosing Ozempic for the vanity pounds. I'm like, what? no, come on. No, we're not doing Ozempic microdosing for the last 10 to 15 pounds that you want to lose because that is definitely sociocultural. Yes, you might feel better if you lose that weight, but let's really see like what's driving that. But that's a whole nother podcast that we can get after. When we look at Ozempic itself, I say, do you remember the movie Wally from like the early 2000s? The little robot? Yes. And there's the one scene where all the people are floating around on the couches and then he accidentally knocks one off. And the guy's like on a screen, all of a sudden he's on the ground and he's like, oh my gosh, it's reality. But he can't get up because he has not ever stood up. I'm like, that's Ozempec society right there, right? Because you're having such rapid weight loss without the education that we have to do stuff to prevent lean mass loss. So all this rapid weight loss is not coming from fat per se, it's coming from bone and muscle. So if we're not giving the tools for people to understand how to get health benefits while they're also losing weight and getting metabolic control, then I don't want to know what society is going to look like in 20 years. It scares me because to be responsible, we need to teach people how to lift weights. We need to teach people how to eat healthy and what it means if they don't, right? We need to pe teach people how to build their bones and how to sleep well, all of these things, because Zimpec is can be a good tool, but it is being misused. It's like, it's a tool in the toolbox, just like everything else, but everyone to maintain health and longevity, they have to put in the work of moving your body and eating well. We're not designed to sit still all day and eat ultra processed foods, which is how we've all gotten to this point in society. We have to reteach people what it means to be human, to move and use our bodies. And Ozempic can be that tool to get you to a state where you feel free enough to start moving, but we have to put that education in as well in order to have a healthy, thriving population rather than the Wally falling off the couch population. I guess there's also that conversation on do you want to feel nauseous? Because that's one of the biggest side effects, right, of Ozempic is feeling sick the entire time. Um, and having, uh, there's that kind of conversation where you were saying, you know, and we have a bit of wine and we have a bit of this and we have a bit of that alongside the any 20 rule. With Ozempic, that doesn't really happen. And then I think the the biggest conversation that I find that doesn't happen around Ozempic is coming off Ozempic. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I um, will share the story because I have been allowed to. I was on a panel with a woman who is a nurse and she was doing research on um, Wagovi, which is like a Zimpec. And she was seeing all these people lose weight and she was relatively overweight, obese and some pre-diabetes stuff. And her colleagues are like, well, maybe you should try it. We're seeing all these great outcomes. And so she's like, oh, okay, I'll do that. So she's got a physician, she's under guidance, she's in these clinical trials, she's you know conducting it, understands it. But then um, they started charging, You know, it was no longer affordable. And so she went to her insurance company and her insurance company was like, well, you didn't get a pre-authorization, so we're not gonna fund it. So when she went to get a, get a pre-auth, they're like, well, you don't meet the qualifications. You don't weigh enough because she lost enough weight using the Wagovi that she now no longer fit the precondition for getting on it. So they wouldn't fund it and she couldn't afford it. So she had to come off it rapidly and she was freaking out. She's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm putting weight on. I don't know what to do. I can't get a pre-auth because I don't weigh enough. And now I've lost all this lean mass because my body composition has changed so much. So we were talking about how to, you know, okay, you've come off it in not such a great way, but let's look at these tools that we can help to improve your health and your fitness. So we're talking about heavy lifting. We're talking about gut microbiome. And then six months later, check back in. She's lost the weight and she feels better without having to use the Ozempec. So I'm like, how much better would it have been if you had had those tools when you were initially on it? So then when it stopped suddenly, you didn't feel at a loss. Because I think that's the thing, like people get on it and the pharmaceutical company is saying, yeah, you can stay on it forever. It's fine. But it's not. And we don't know the long term ramifications. Yeah. And we don't want to be injecting ourselves every day. Also, I don't know. There's just something no. about that's not that's yeah. not. And I, that's kind of also, you know, type two diabetes. We don't want to be getting to that phase and we don't we don't need to be. 
Um, very different for type one, but it's that big conversation, right? And I just think, isn't it sad that we feel as women the pressure to have to even think about microdosing? Where I mean, there's microdosing of things that could be great, not as empic, not as empic, 